The death toll from a blast in the Somali capital has risen to at least 20. That's according to Somali officials, though some news organizations have put the toll nearer to 30. A car bomb went off at a busy marketplace west of the capital, Mogadishu. At least 25 other people have been wounded. The death toll could rise as some people sustained horrifying injuries. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack, but militants group Al-Shabaab is the main suspect. Its leader at the weekend said Al-Shabaab is opposed to newly elected president Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo. It's feared that the group may target the presidential inauguration, scheduled for later this week. It's the first major attack in Mogadishu since Farmajo won the presidential elections. The victims of this attack include traders who had been selling goods in the market and customers who are going to buy. The residents of the nearby villages were also affected by this explosion. From the time the explosion occurred, we have been transporting the victims. Until now, we can confirm 20 dead people. Really, it is very difficult and we pray for those affected in the attack. Well, let's bring you the very latest on the story. I'm joined live from Mogadishu by CGTN's Abdulaziz Bilo. Uh, Abdulaziz, to begin with, some media reports are, or some media organizations rather, are reporting that the death toll could be as high as 30. Can you just give us some clarity on that and uh, talk us through what we know so far? Well, in the state media here, Radio Mogadishu, uh, before we came to this live cross, was uh, broadcasting that uh, the death toll had uh, reached uh, 30. So that has been confirmed from uh, the government side. Now we're getting uh, different accounts here. Local media are providing uh, different information, as uh, we've put out in uh, that uh, soundbite there with uh, the district commissioner. He's saying that more than 20 people uh, died. So some of those uh, who were uh, the injured were taken to hospital. Some of them died there in the hospital, according to ambulance services. Now, what exactly happened, Lindy, is a vehicle laden with improvised explosive device uh, went off at a populated market in the west of Mogadishu. The place is called Kawagudi in the Wadajir district of uh, Mogadishu. Quite a popular market there. And uh, during the time of the attack, it was around 1 p.m. That's a, a very, very strategic uh, uh, time, a perfect timing, rather, one would say, uh, for the, the bomber to detonate. There, the market was quite uh, crowded. Uh, traders and uh, local uh, cu customers had arrived there to, to, to do their uh, daily business. So, uh, the attack. They are a perf a perfect timing, one would say, according to experts here in uh, Mogadishu. And uh, at least uh, 30 people were killed in uh, that attack. There's been no claim of uh, responsibility yet. But then again, it bears all the hallmarks of a uh, previous Al-Shabaab attacks. And it comes exactly just one day after uh, President Farmajo met with African Union officials where he asked uh, authorities here to to, to end the Al-Shabaab operation and uh, to be able to rebuild the Somali army so that it can be able to secure uh, the border. So definitely this is the first major attack under President Farmajo Lindi. And what's quite worrying, of course, Abdulaziz, is that this attack comes just days ahead of uh, uh, the Somali presidential inauguration. Are there concerns that Al-Shabaab may target the inauguration itself? And uh, what's being done in terms of security to prevent that? Well, in the, uh, the militant group Al Shabaab had remained rather silent about the election of President Farmajo until yesterday when he met the African Union forces uh, or diplomats here in the country where he talked about Amisom will stay here in Somalia until uh, the SNA, the Somali National Army, and the intelligence forces are, uh, are strengthened. So that is the time the Al Shabaab, uh, according to experts, say they were angered by that uh, comment. So they were rather silent about Farmajo's win. So his inauguration is due for the 22nd. Now authorities here are saying that they have strengthened the security measures. One of that is we don't know the exact venue where the inauguration will take place. So that definitely is a security measure on its own. And uh, the civil aviation authorities have also said uh, that on the 22nd, they have imposed a no-fly zone here in Somalia as world leaders are expected to attend this event. And also across the capital, security has been heightened. Only yesterday, government officials, uh, uh, senior officials working with the intelligence and a former government official, one of them was gunned down and the other was injured in a drive-by shooting here in the capital. So uh, security definitely has been heightened here uh, ahead of President 
Farmajo's inauguration on the 22nd, Lindy. And of course, this incident, just a reminder of the pressure that President Farmajo will face in trying to eradicate al-Shabaab. He's promised to do so within uh, two years. But of course, as we see today, not even the capital Mogadishu is safe. Um, how is the new president planning to achieve this feat? Well, Lindy, President Farmajo, in an exclusive interview we had with him a few uh, days ago, said that he has a sound plan. Uh, part of that plan is to be able to strengthen the Somali National Army and its intelligence forces. One thing for President Farmajo says is that uh, the only way to defeat the militant group Al-Shabaab is with a local army. And he's saying that the African Union forces have done a commendable job in pacifying the, Al the, the, the territory from Al-Shabaab. He's uh, praising the African Union forces and he has called on them to stay in the country until his government has a strong, a competent security force so that he can be able to tackle Al-Shabaab head on. So that is one uh, thing that President Farmajo has been reiterating time and again, that the only way to defeat Al-Shabaab is with a strong Somali force. And also uh, one thing the president also told us is that uh, the public support, his government enjoys quite a uh, huge public support. He's saying if the government takes uh, advantage of the public support and then it's going, the, the locals are going to, to assist authorities in identifying where Al-Shabaab are and also to identify about the, pre the, the attacks prior to them happening. So uh, that is also part of his own agenda. So uh, definitely Farmajo enjoys quite a public support and many here are optimistic that he's definitely going to improve uh, the security of the capital and the security of the country that has been deteriorating over the past years. But then again, Al-Shabaab, a major challenge, a major threat to his administration and it has already said it's going to wage a relentless war against his government, Lindy. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for that update. Abdulaziz Bilo, live for us there in Mogadishu. And of course, uh, he did mention that the death toll um, has been confirmed now by state media to be sitting at 30. And of course, we will keep you updated on those developments as we get more information from Somali authorities.